Hi, Munsif M. Ahmed here. Today we'll try to understand the concept of factory with respect to system Verilog UVM. And one important question. And the question is why it is recommended to use factories create method for creating an object or allocating a memory instead of using new construct for memory allocation. Okay, so the simple answer for this question is if you see the literature, you'll find that it is recommended to use factories create method over new construct for creating an object or allocating a memory. Why? Because if we are using new construct, then the factory overriding is not possible. Meaning if you want to override our test bench architecture with a new kind of transaction in the future, it is, new, it is not possible using new construct. It is only possible if we are using factories create method for creating an object and we are registering a, registering a class with the UVM factor. Okay. Now, I hope you know the concept of factory and factory overriding and importance of the factor. If you don't know, then let's have a little bit discussion what is factory and importance of factory. So UVM factory is nothing but a class that manufacture or create UVM objects and components during runtime. This is what the definition of that. And it has an ability to override the data types. In fact, the overriding is nothing but overriding or changing the data type so that our test bench architecture or component, particular component will work with a new kind of transaction. This is what the definition of overriding. So let's understand this concept. As you know, for verifying any design completely and getting 100% coverage, we need to have a multiple transaction, multiple sequences for that. Because one sequence is capable of generating one kind of transaction. So we need to write multiple sequences. And you know that if there are multiple sequences, we need to write multiple test classes also. Because in the test class, in the build phase of the test class, which is top component of the test bench architecture, we are rising the objection and drop-in objection. In that, we are starting that particular sequence on a sequencer. So if there are multiple sequences, we need to write multiple test classes also. Okay. Now consider if our test bench architecture consists of 100 components. And we want and, in, and we want to override those components in the future. So in system very lock, we have used the concept of uh, polymorphism, meaning we are using that object assignment statement. We are using that P is equal to C1, for example, meaning the child object is pointing towards the parent object. So it is easy if the test bench architecture consists of list components. Let's see, for example, it consists of 100 components that it's not very big deal to write 100 object assignment statements for every component. But if the test bench architecture is become some complex, like if it is consists of 1000 components, then it become quite difficult to sit and write the object assignment statement for every component. It is laborious kind of. Work. So to overcome that, the UVM developers give us a very beautiful concept called factory and factory overriding. So with the help of one line of instruction, we can override the entire test bench architecture or we can override a particular component. So there are two types of overriding. First one is global overriding. It is for the entire test bench architecture and one is instance overriding for a specific instance or a particular component like agent. Okay, so we'll try to see the syntaxes for this global overriding and instance overriding. Okay, so the syntax for global overriding is factory dot set type override by type. And within parenthesis, we need to write original type followed by scope resolution operator get type. And then substitute type scope resolution operator get type and replace is equal to one. This is what the default value. 
and the syntax for instance overriding instance overriding is for a specific instance or a particular component like any agent as i told you okay the syntax for that is factory dot set instance override by type within parenthesis we need to provide the path in the double quote for example agent okay and the substitute original type followed by get type scope resolution operator get type and substitute type scope resolution operator get type and replace is equal to one default value this is what is a um, syntax is for global overriding and instance overriding now we'll try to see when we are using the factory for that what we need to use for the factory to create components and object we need to register a class with the factory first thing second important thing is we need to create components and objects using factory's create method not with new construct and we can override or changing the data type of the components and objects if needed so if we are using new construct the factory's overriding is not possible instead of that we need to use factory's create method for creating an objects then only overriding is possible we'll try to see this concept new difference between new construct and create method using a simple example now try to see a very simple example we'll see a very simple example the simple example is a ram 16 cross 8 so the 16 is a depth and 8 is a width okay so input output will be of 8 bit okay and address will be of 4 bit 2 raised to power 4 is equal to 16 and one input is clock and one is write enabled okay now we'll try to write a simple code for this and we'll try to understand that concept first two lines are important we need to give them we need to give them first is tick include uvm macros.svh this will give us the access to uvm macros and another one is import uvm package colon colon <coughs> star this line will give us an access to uvm packages now this is what the global definition i am writing using tick define ram width is is equal to 8 and address is 4 okay now this is what a transaction class or sequence item class which is extending from uvm sequence item okay and i am declaring rand properties for this input so that in future if i want to randomize them i can randomize them and this is what the factories registration and field macros tick uvm object details begin and tick object details tick uh, uvm object details end inside that i am using tick uvm field int or the and within parenthesis input address and write enable okay and this is what a uh, uvm all on and plus uvm disable with this i uh, i can print a uh, decimal value so by default it will print in u uh, uh, hexadecimal okay so in future if i i'm calling the print method it will print those properties in things in the decimal format and this object uh, uvm all on enabler will uh, enable all the methods like print copy clone and all and as this class is a object class in the uvm base class hierarchy its default constructor expecting only one argument so this is a default constructor which is expecting one argument function new input string name class name within parenthesis double quote super dot new and end function and i am writing just a simple constraint so the constraint is like input should be inside of 10 to 14 sorry d in should be inside 10 to 40 okay and the address should inside 0 to 10 this is what a simple constraint for this sequence item and i am ending the class sequence item 1 this is what a sequence item 2 class which is extending from sequence item item 1 so this is what a child class extending with the parent class okay and i am registering tick uvm object details because it is an object class and i am writing a simple constraint here so the constraint constraint name within curly brace address i am giving is equal to 10 so address every time should be 10 only this is what a simple constraint and this is what a default constructor with one argument and i am ending a class here sequence item 2 now in the top module what i am doing <coughs> i am just creating an object or uh, creating an instance for this sequence item 1 which is a parent class okay and inside the build i am doing 
am allocating a memory for this instance using factories create method and this is what the syntax for that instance name is equal to class name followed by type id colon colon type id and create within parenthesis i'm just giving the instance double code okay this is what a creating an object using factories create method and i have just commented this new sequence <coughs> handler is equal to new so we will uh, see this also with the help of this the factory overriding is not possible first we'll see uh, using create method how overriding is possible and why i'm randomizing this okay and just i'm printing the values whatever randomization is done within initial begin block i'm writing repeat block five times okay inside i'm them just printing info before factory overriding uvm none is a i'm giving here verbosity and i'm calling build method so this build method <coughs> what will do five times it will generate random data and it will print okay and here i am writing an overriding global overriding factory dot set type override by type this is what my original type sequence item 1 and this is what my substitute type so this original type is um, having the address is equal to 0 to 10 okay and dean is equal to uh, dean is inside uh, 10 to 40 okay so what i am doing i am uh, replacing this with the second time of transaction this is what a syntax for global overriding really. and after that <coughs> i am uh, just repeat five i am giving within begin end block i am saying info after factory overriding uvm none okay and i am calling that build method so this is what before factory overriding and after overriding so before overriding the d in will be inside 10 to 40 and the address will be 0 to 10 whereas after overriding we want that address should be 10 only always and d in will be anything okay random date so we'll try to see and we are using this create method so overriding will possible here okay now we'll run the code go to transcript and write q very log simple command and uh, file name the file name is uvm practice dot sv and enter we'll see so the factory overriding should happen here this is what our expectation because we are using factory create method for creating an object so if you see and analyze the output you will find that factory overriding will happen here so this is what print method is printing okay before factory overriding the d in is between we have given a constraint like d in should be inside uh, 10 to 40 right so first time it is 25 okay and address is like 0 to 10 okay so it's taking 0 so five times before overriding we are calling that okay so it's 34 d in next is the uh, address is 6 okay next time 32 and address is 9 next time address d in is equal to 16 address is equal to 5 and fifth time it is 16 and d1 okay address now after overriding our expectation is that d in uh, should be anything like random data whereas the address should be 10 so if you see address is equal to 10 always and after factory overriding okay so after calling that factory overriding we are expecting this 10 and it is giving a 10 so this is what factory overriding is possible while if we use a new construct then we'll see what happen if we new use new construct then factory overriding is possible or not okay so while we're creating an object inside that just uh, comment this line create method and just give new construct okay so our expectation is that uh, the next time factory overriding after it should address should be 10 only but if we are using new construct the factory overriding will not possible let's try to see that run the code once again q very log file name so here you will see that the factory overriding is not possible so as you can see it's printing the values okay so before overriding it is like 34 any random data d in 10 to 40 
and address is like 0 to 10 any okay so you can see over here after overriding we want that uh, that address should be 10 only but if you see here address is 3 it is also giving a random data meaning the overriding is not possible here so this is what a simple answer for that question meaning if we are using a new construct for creating an object the factory overriding is not possible so to override a factory we should use create method instead of new construct this is what a simple explanation for that so with this i hope you have understood the concept of factory importance of factory and uh, the answer for that question why it is recommended to use factories create method for creating an object instead of new construct okay so i hope you understood all the concepts of factory and factory overriding and also you have enjoyed this video so thanks